Okay guys, so in this video we're going to talk about strategies for testing series. Um, so first of all, basically we've learned several ways to test a series for convergence or divergence and the biggest challenge is actually determining which method to use because when it comes to it in kind of normal situations we're no longer in the section of alternating series. We're no longer in the section of uh, limit comparison or whatever. We are now just looking at a series and trying to determine whether it converges or not. So <clears throat> basically this is a lot like our methods of integration where we don't want to just run down a list uh, one after the other but instead think about what form our series takes and then use the method most likely to work from that uh, for that form. Basically <clears throat> we want to think about what to try first try it if it doesn't work then we want to try something else but we want to try and make sure that we're we're figuring out the right move the first time as much as possible so I'm gonna go through these different methods we have so first and foremost the first one we should see is a test for divergence if we can see that the limit as n approaches infinity of our um, sequence a sub n may not equal zero then we can apply the test for divergence and if we can just show well clearly this doesn't go to zero so it would diverge then that's fine the next is whether it's a p series or a geometric series if it's a p series or a geometric series we should recognize that and determine whether it converges a p series converges if our power is greater than one and it Diver uh, converges if its power is greater than 1 or diverges if its power is less than or equal to 1. A geometric series is going to uh, converge as long as our ratio absolute value is less than or equal to 1. And it diverges, or I should say less than 1, it diverges if it's greater than or equal to 1. So sometimes though we have to use algebraic manipulation to get it, that series into this form. All right, so those are the basic ones that if we recognize, we can use that. The next one is our comparison tests. If the series has a form similar to a P or geometric series, we use comparison tests. If the series is not always positive, then we use comparison tests for the absolute value of it to test for convergence. So we just take the absolute then. The next is if we see an alternating series, then we should definitely consider using the alternating series test. So Ideally, we'd like to see that our B sub n converges so that the series absolutely converges rather than just having to do it based off the alternating series test, but if all we need to show is it converges, then that is sufficient. But absolute convergence is always a, a good thing if we can show that. The next one we have is we have the ratio test. So any series that involves factorials or other products, including a constant raised to the nth power, are often found using ratio tests. However, all P series and thus all rational or algebraic functions of N have a ratio test equal to or a ra ratio equal to one. So the ratio test is going to be inconclusive on them. So it's just not going to work for it. So a lot of times students want to use the ratio test in every situation, but the ratio test is great and useful, but sometimes it's horrible overkill, and oftentimes when you use it where you're not supposed to, you end up getting something meaningless, like it's equal to 1. The next thing we have is obviously the root test. If a sub n is of the form b sub n to the n, then the root test may be useful. So if we see something raised to a power of n, root test probably. Now, the last one, something we don't really want to use if we can avoid it, but if we see it and it's obvious, then obviously we use it. It's the integral test. So if a sub n is some function where the integral from 1 to infinity is easily evaluated, then the integral test is, an effective, is effective, assuming the hypothesis of the tests are satisfied. That is, f is continuous, positive, decreasing function on the interval from 1 to infinity. If that's the case, then cool, we can do that. If it isn't, then integral test doesn't work. And to be honest, a lot of issues comes from trying to integrate things. Obviously, we can't necessarily um, easily integrate everything. So that's also a problem. OK, so let's go through some examples here and, and see how we go about doing that. OK, so the first one, we have 3 to the n over n. Now, 3 to the n is an exponential, n is just one power. So this 3 to the n is growing really fast. And if we take a look at Desmos here, 
3 to the n over n. Uh, let's change that for x. Call it x. 3 to the x over x. Now, if we start here and we move forward, I mean, clearly this is just going off into the infinites. So this diverges. Oops. So let me hide that. This diverges by the um, test for divergence. So the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 over n, 3 to the n over n, is just going to be infinity. So it diverges. So easy. We can see it diverges. Moving on. OK, let's take a look at another one. We have 1 over n to the 3 halves. Well, this is a p series. So this is a 1 over n to the p, where in our case, p is greater than 1. So it converges. So it's a convergent p series. OK. Let's take a look at another one. All right, we have 1 over 5 to the n. Well, that can be rewritten as something like 1 to the n over 5 to the n, because 1 to the n is also 1, which would be 1 over 5 to the n. Now, this thing here is a geometric series. We have some ratio raised to the power, and the absolute value of 1 over 5 is less than 1, so it is a convergent geometric series. All right, let's take a look at another one. We have the series 1 plus cosine n over e to the n. OK, so first of all, what we have here is um, if we think about this thing, we have 1 plus cosine n. Now, cosine is always going to be between negative 1 to 1. That's all it can be, somewhere in that range. So lowest case, this would be 1 minus 1, which would be 0. And highest case, in that case, would be uh, positive 1, so 1 plus 1. So if that's the case, then 1 plus cosine n over e to the n will be less than or equal to 2 over e to the n. OK, so that is to say, then, that if that's the case, then this could be written as this 2 over e to the n can be written as 2 times 1 over e to the n. Now, this thing here is just a constant. So it's like saying 2 times our series n equals 1 to infinity. That 2 has no real bearing on its convergence. So because of that, we can rewrite this as 2 times 1 over e to the n. Now this is also a geometric series that converges. So it's a convergent geometric series. 2 times a convergent geometric series is also convergent. So because this converges, this is a convergent geometric series, then this must also converge by direct comparison. OK, let's take a look at another one. Hmm, that's weird. That imported oddly. Anyway, no big deal. This is just ln of n. Yeah. ln of n. There we go. So we have some series from 2 onwards of um, negative 1 to the n over ln n. OK, so first of all, this is an alternating, so it's not always positive. So let's think about the absolute value of this thing. That would be 1 over ln n. Now, that thing here is going to be greater than uh, 1 over n. And so since this is a divergent p-series, then this also diverges by direct comparison. So absolute isn't going to work for us. So instead, we're going to move into just thinking about this as an alternating series. It is an alternating series. So we're going to do the alternating series test. The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over ln n 
that is going to be 1 over infinity, which is 0. So that's our first check. Our limit goes to 0. The next thing we need to check is that um, 1, so basically our b sub n plus 1 is going to be less than b sub n for all n. Okay, so our b sub n is this 1 over ln. So that is to say 1 over ln n plus 1 has to be less than 1 over ln n. Now, this plus 1 doesn't make a big difference, but it makes enough of a difference to make this greater than this for all n. So since the bottom here is greater than this, um, than this one, then this b sub n plus 1 must be less than 1 over ln n. So, that checks. So, this then converges conditionally. So, converges conditionally by the alternating series test. So, again, we couldn't show that it is absolutely convergent, but we can show that it converges by alternating series. All right, let's take a look at another one. We have the series n equals 1 to infinity, 10 to the n over n plus 1, 4 to the 2n plus 1. All right, we have some functions of n, so I'm thinking ratio test in something like this, especially these exponents here. Um, not everything is to the n, so I'm not going to do the root test, but I'm seeing a bunch of things to the power of n. I'm going to try the uh, ratio test. So that is the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of um, basically our a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. So for us, that is going to be um, the absolute value of 10 to the n plus 1 over n plus 2 times 4 to the 2 times n plus 1. We have to be really careful here. It's really easy to just add 1 at the end of this, but this n is now n plus 1, so 2 times n plus 1 plus 1. Um, and that's all divided by our 10 to the n over n plus 1, 4 uh, to the 2n plus 1. Okay, so that's what we're saying here. So let's clean this up a little bit. 10 to the n plus 1, that's going to be 10 to the n times 10 over n plus 2 times 4 to the 2n plus 2 plus 1. So that is to say, if we, well, we'll deal with that in a sec, and it's times the reciprocal. So n plus 1 times uh, 4 to the 2n plus 1 over 10 to the n. Okay, now I can be a little bit more consistent here. Notice I wrote my sum powers as like 10 to the n times 10. So I can rewrite this thing. The only reason I'm not combining this 2 and 1 is because this has a 1 here. So really this is like saying 10 to the n times 10 over n plus 2 times 4 to the 2n plus 1 times 4 squared because that's this, this portion here, the squared. And I'm just writing it so that I have this in the exact same form of that one, so it's easy to cancel. That's times n plus 1 times 4 to the 2n plus 1 over 10 to the n. All right, so at this stage, 4, 2n plus 1, those cancel. 10 to the n cancels, and we're left with 10 times n plus 1 over n plus 2 times 16. That's what 4 squared is, so 16. And this is the limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, so in this case, this is going to be 10n plus 10 over 16n plus 32. Now at the infinite, so as the limit as n approaches infinity of this thing, and this is positive anyway, so we don't need the absolute value, then at the infinities, the only things that matter here are uh, the 10 times n and the 16 times n. So we end up with 10n over 16n, which is going to be 10 over 16, which is both divisible by 2, so that would be 5 eighths. So 5 eighths here is less than 1. So this converges by the um, ratio test. Okay. 
we have another one here. We have another alternating series, so if all else fails, we have the alternating series test. But let's start with, does it converge absolutely? So let's think about it in terms of the absolute value, which would be 1 over ln n to the n. Okay, so in this case, we could write this as 1 over ln n to the n. So in that case, what we do is we can take the nth root. We're going to do the, um, the root test. So the nth root of this, and we get the limit as n approaches infinity of this nth root would be 1 over ln n, which is going to go to 1 over infinity, which is 0. So that is, in fact, less than 1. So this also converges absolutely. So this is an absolute convergence by the root test. All right, now let's take a look at another one. Okay, so we have the uh, sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the square root 2. Okay, now that might look horrifying. Uh, but first of all, this is a p-series. Uh, no, yes, we have a p-series, 1 over n to the square root 2. That would be a p-series. That's one way we can think about this. Okay, so if we go back to our p-series, um, square root 2 is definitely greater than that, uh, greater than 1. So square root 2 is greater than 1. We also have the option is, this is like saying n to the negative square root 2. And if we want to integrate this thing, first of all, we need to check that this is a continuous function on our interval. So 1 over x to the square root 2 is here. So it is a decreasing function. It is continuous. It is positive. And so the, li uh, the integral from 1 to infinity of this will work. The integral test should work. In this case, I'm just doing it in terms of n. Um, even though we could probably, we usually call it x. Okay, so that is to say, we raise this power by 1, so this is x to the negative square root 2 plus 1. And um, we are going to then divide by this new power, negative square root 2 plus 1. Now, the benefit of this is that we can actually uh, determine this sum here, potentially. So that's why it's great to uh, be able to integrate this thing here. So we have this thing, and it is from 0, or excuse me, 1 to t. We're going to take the limit as t approaches infinity. I mean, really, I mean, we could just call it x or whatever. But anyway, so we have, um, I'm going to rewrite this thing a little bit. Since this is a negative square root 2 plus 1, um, what this is is if we want to, we could kind of write it on the bottom or whatever. This square root 2 is greater than 1. So square root 2 minus 1 okay, is some value here, right? Something like this. Or in this case, this is a negative 2 plus 1, something like that. Okay, so it's negative this thing. So that is to say it is, if we pull a negative out of this thing, we can factor out that negative. Um, so we, we get uh, x before we apply the limit first. I'm going to just rewrite this. This is x to the negative square root 2 minus 1, something like that, so that I can then rewrite it on the bottom as x to the square root 2 minus 1 on the bottom of our fraction 1 times negative square root 2 plus 1. And we are taking this from t to 1, the limit, as t approaches infinity. OK, so if we plug t into here, we just get 1 over t to the square root 2 minus 1 times negative square root 2 minus 1 plus 1, excuse me. OK. So this thing here is a negative. This thing, so we end up with the limit as t approaches infinity for this thing. So that we'll deal with in a sec, but let's do 1 now. So minus our 1. If we plug in 1 here, 
we get uh, 1 over 1 to the square root 2 minus 1 times negative square root 2 plus 1. Okay, so as a reminder, it doesn't really matter. 1 to the square root of 2 minus 1, it doesn't matter how complicated this exponent might seem, it's still going to be 1. So we end up taking t to infinity here. So infinity to a positive power is going to be 1 over infinity times some negative number, doesn't really matter, minus our um, 1 over 1 times negative square root 2 plus 1. Okay, so this thing here is going to go to 0. So if we take this thing, 1 over negative infinity is just 0 minus 1 over negative square root 2 plus 1, which if we multiply this negative into it, we get 1 over square root 2 minus 1. And this is our actual sum. So this thing here converges to this. All right. So that's why we wouldn't, if we can integrate it, we do, even though it is a p-series and it does converge. Um, if we can integrate it, then not only does it converge, but we can show what it converges to, which is really great. So that is essentially our strategies for testing series. Again, when we look at these things, we need to recognize as what rule do I think will work? Try it out. But don't really get too caught up in trying to find you know, the perfect guess every time. If you don't get it right, it's pretty quick to see that you know things aren't going to work out that way. So for example, I think when we had, um, let's see, like this one here, first thing I checked was absolute, but it diverges. So that you know, was whatever. So that was my first try to see if it would converge absolutely, but at least we could show that it converges conditionally. So again, you don't have to be perfect every time, but you should at least recognize to a certain degree what methods probably should work. So that has been our strategy for testing series. Thanks for watching.